Hi everyone, I'm Navrita and I'm a developer advocate at Reality Labs who works on products and features for our developers who are helping us shape the future of VR. In this series of videos, we'll go over Quest multiplayer features by exploring the shared spaces sample made in Unity. This is the first episode of a four-part video series. In today's video, we will go over the platform SDK multiplayer features in Quest and what we can build with it. Following that, we will play around with the shared spaces sample that we can get from AppLab and see how we can invite people to join us in this experience. So let's dive in. Quest multiplayer features let users find, invite, and play together in various VR games and apps. These features include destinations, group presence, invites, invite link, rejoin, rosters, quick invites, group launch, and notifications. Let's quickly learn what some of these features provide to us. Let's go over the foundational features first. Destinations. Destinations are locations that users will travel to within your game. Destinations are essential to the multiplayer features in Quest development. Group presence. Group presence gives information about which app a user is in, if there is a match, if they are at a specific destination, if they are joinable, etc. And deep links. Deep links allow developers to direct users into a specific experience. Whenever a user launches your app to join someone or navigates to a destination, the deep link includes information on the desired destination and any lobby or match. The first step to any multiplayer experience is to integrate destinations, group presence, and deep links. Next, let's look at some of the other features that the SDK offers, such as invite to app, invite link, and the roster. The invite to app feature allows players to invite quest friends and recently played with users into existing lobbies. The SDK provides functions to list available and invitable users that the user can invite. Once the user has sent an invite, a notification pops up on the invited friend's headset to allow them to join your experience. As more people join your experience, the SDK also offers functions to show a list of users who share the same lobby session as the user through the roster. The roster helps users view which people are in the game with them. You can even use an invite link that can be generated on the Oculus mobile app. This is an open invite link containing a URL that can be shared to anyone to meet up together in an app. Everyone entering through the same link should end up in the same private session at the destination. Now that we've gone over some of the multiplayer features that the platform SDK has to offer, let's take a look at a sample where these can be seen in action. To make it easy for our developers to try out and use these multiplayer features in their games, we created a sample project called Shared Spaces. In today's video, we will try out the Unity version. However, an Unreal version of this game is also available and a link to the repo for that will be provided in the description box below. The sample uses three layers of networking. Our platform SDK, which allows us to set the destinations, presence, lobby and match. The transport layer, Photon SDK which is responsible for the communication between the users who share a space and networking capabilities provided by Unity's netcode for game objects SDK. So without further ado, let's go to App Lab to get the sample on our headset and try it out. Now that we have the app installed, let's put on our headset and see all the multiplayer features we learned in practice in shared spaces. We are currently in the lobby where we start this experience. The player is represented by this colorful character which we can control using our controllers. The left controller moves the player around and the right controller moves the camera around so we can comfortably see the world around and choose to go where we'd like. You can even use the button B on your controller to allow your character to jump. On the right, we see a debug panel which lets us know the status of the destinations, the networking layer and information about who joins the room. On the left, we see three private destinations that we can enter into and on the right, we can see a public destination that we can enter into. On the top left, we see the option to invite friends to join us in this experience. On the top right, we see a roster which gives us information on who else is in the experience with us. Behind me, there is a paint shop where the player has an option to change the color of their player. You can even use the button A to change the color of your character. 
On the bottom left and bottom right, I see an option to query myself and my friends to learn more and get more information about the players. Now that we have a fairly clear idea of the space, let's try entering one of the destinations. Let's enter the public purple destination. The purple room is a public destination that anyone can enter and is reachable from any lobby. Here we are in the purple room. Now let's go back to my lobby. Now that I'm back in my lobby, I can see that there are three more rooms that I can enter. These colored rooms represent matches for the purpose of demonstrating the lobby and match session IDs. The red, green and blue rooms represent private matches accessible to people from a given lobby and can be joined by people from other lobbies through direct invitation, while the purple room represents a public match reachable from any lobby. So before we enter these, Let's first try inviting someone to join us in my lobby. Let's try inviting my friend Cami into my lobby to join me as I explore. Since I started the experience in the lobby, I am the master client of my lobby and I am hosting it. I'll go on to the invite friends pad to see the list of friends I can invite. I'll invite Cami and let's see if she accepts my invite. A notification pops up telling Cami that I have invited her to join me in my experience. She accepted the invitation to join me and I see her in my lobby. Hey Cami, thanks for joining me. This is pretty cool. From now on, Cami and I will share the same lobby ID. Now, let's try to start a private match in the blue room. Cami, let's meet you in the blue room. Cami entered the blue room followed by me. Since she entered before me, she is the one hosting the room and I am connected to her. We also have the same match session ID that corresponds to the blue room. Now if we leave the blue room, we both return to my lobby, since we share the same lobby ID. If I had invited Cami while I was in the blue room and she was in her own lobby when she accepted my invitation, her match ID would have changed to the same match session ID that corresponds to the blue room, but her lobby ID would have been the same one that she had before. In that case, if we left the blue room, we would have returned to our own lobbies, which would be different. Now let's return back to our lobby. This was a quick walkthrough of the Unity Shared Spaces sample app that shows the multiplayer concepts that we discussed earlier in the video. We hope this video was helpful to show what platform SDK multiplayer features have to offer and what you can build with it. If you prefer to consume information in a written format, we published a blog post that will go over all the things that we discussed in this video. The supporting blog can be found on Meta Open Source as well as on the Oculus Developer Blog channels, both of which are linked in the description box below. To learn more about Platform SDK Multiplayer Features in Quest, check out the documentation about multiplayer features. You will also find the link to the App Lab page so that you can download and try Shared Spaces sample for yourself. The link to the GitHub repo can also be found in the description box below. In our next video, we will show you how to build the sample getting it from GitHub, building it and running it on your own headset. So stay tuned and see you in the next video. Until next time.